that's fine. Okay. Hello, everyone. So I'm going to talk about a solution for the web thread jigsaw. So basically, I'm going to introduce some tools and how I use those tools. And I will give you a short overview of the, all those tools. Okay. So I will start with my mom. So I usually start my talks with um, talking something random, and this talking something random turns into my actual talk. So when Jose talked about social social networks and how we can transfer our knowledge of honeypots into the social networks, my first thought, thought was my mom, because my mom is actually the perfect honeypot for the social network. So if she sees a link on Facebook, she clicks on a link. So all you have to do is have to monitor my mom's machine, and you get the data <laughs> from this honeypot. So, but well, let's be serious. So, that threads is, we have to teach the users. We have to teach them, hey, don't click on this link. But if you have to try to teach your mom to not click on the link which tells her that she can earn millions of money, millions of dollars, then you will know that your mom's probably not the perfect um, point to start solving the problems in the internet. So what we, we've done so far is we have virtual machines, we have browser emulation, we have domain reputation and antivirus engines to de determine if a domain is malicious or not. So all we do right now is we search for threats, and if it's malicious, we block it. So it's reacting. We don't go forward and say, hey, let's stop them before they compromise the machine. Let's stop them before they start to compromise my mom's machine. So what we want to do is we want to observe the infection. We want to see how, get, how do they infect other machines? How do, we, do they compromise websites? Because if we know how they compromise, we know how we can stop them. And we get more information about how they actually compromise systems and distribute their malware. So I'm talking about the malware distribution domain, which is basically the host of the malicious code which gets injected in compromised websites. So and when we know about how they compromise other systems, we can, we can stop them from compromising systems, and we can make them suffer. Suffer means we make the work really hard. And making them suffer is actually pretty easy. And in most of the cases, it's, it's also illegal. So there, there are easy and legal ways to make them suffer and make them make, make their work really expensive. Expensive not in terms of money, but in terms of time. So slowing them down, um, taking over their network, taking over their botnets, just make it hard for them to compromise systems. So I'm a German and I prefer efficiency. So when I do something, it must be automated. I mean, I, if, you, if you see this machine here, so this is a direct link to my honeypot, and it's only one domain. Uh, it's pretty small, but if you, if you later come to me, I can show you. So this is mostly Google. Uh, visiting my website, crawling my website. And if you think you're a good webmaster with 10 Google visits per day, I get every 10 seconds a Google visit on one single domain. So this means the stuff I put on my domain is immediately in the Google index, and attackers will find me. So I want to make it efficient. So if I get a lot of data, I want to make, analyze it automatically. I want to share the data with other people so they can process it. I, I want efficiency. That was one of my most important um, motivations. So I'm proposing a small system. It consists on client-side honeypots. Basically was what, what uh, 
um, Angelo Slater presenting after me. So clients visiting websites, collecting information about the website, decide if they're malicious or not. And this data can be fed into a sandbox. Sandbox analyzes the data and gets processed further. And on the server side, we will have a um, web application honeypot. So it's basically a website pretending to be vulnerable. Attackers will try to compromise it. We get the information about the attack. And the information we get, we can put into the sandbox, analyze it, and process it further. So process it further means we can extract the command and control infrastructure from the samples we get from the client side and from the malicious code injected into our honeypot. And we can use this kind of data to do reporting. So we get the IP addresses. We can re report the IP addresses so they can be taken down. And we can also use the monitoring to hurt them. So if we, if we are actually monitoring a botnet, we can see how they compromise other systems. They need botnets to compromise systems. Because if you want to compromise a specific vulnerability in a website, you have to find all the websites with this specific vulnerability and then infect them. So they basically have the same needs as the people finding the, the malicious websites. They need also big server farms to compromise systems. So if we are able to slow down those server farms, we're able to make it time intensive and time costly for them to compromise systems. So now I showed you the honeypot, sandbox, and the monitoring. So all those three tools are connected with something called the HoneyNet, HoneyNet Project Feeds, or HP Feeds. So it's basically a generic and live and authenticated data feed. So what I showed here, that's actually HP Feed output. It's a simple client connected to the HP Feed, and you can easily watch the data, use the data, and put the data in the sandbox, analyze it automatically as soon as you get the attack on the honeypot, use the analysis result from the sandbox, put it into the monitoring tool, and start monitoring the botnet. And you can lean back, watch. It's efficient, it's automated, and you don't have to interact. So I hereby announce Glassdoor version 3. The latest version, um, it was the development on the third version was started uh, six months ago. And some of the features are intelligent classification, so we don't want to use static rules anymore. So static rules are easy to evade, so we want to improve this. Actually, in our case, it's not that hard as in the case of a firewall. So if, if an attack slips, so we are, if you are not able to classify your attack properly, we just don't care. I mean, it's, we don't get enough in information from it, but it's not that bad as in the case of firewall. So, but we are in a position where we can easily um, classify requests because most of them are malicious or from Google crawlers. The biggest new feature in a new cluster version is the internal sandbox. So if there's code injected into our, sand in, into our honeypot, the internal sandbox will analyze the code and will generate um, a response from the injected code. And we also have a WSGI module, which basically you can plug in your, sand, uh, your honeypot into, our, into your web server. You don't have to replace your web server with the honeypot's web server. So as I mentioned, we have HP feed integration, so we can easily send the data from our honeypot to our sandbox, or whoever wants to analyze the data collected. Um, it's 100% pure, pure Python, so it's easy to extend, easy to read, easy to understand. And we have different kind of vulnerability type modules. So we're not emulating specific vulnerabilities. So if there's a new vulnerability in, I don't know, Joomla, we're not generating a specific module for this vulnerability. But we emulate vulnerabilities like remote file inclusion, local file inclusion, SQL injections. So this makes it really powerful when there are new attacks coming up. So if there's a new attack for Joomla, for example, and we don't know about the attack, we don't care because we already have a module handling this specific type of attack. So now we have collected an attack. We have collected, for example, a PHP bot in our honeypot. We want to analyze it. We want to put it in a sandbox. So I wrote this little PHP sandbox. 
which is basically an APD um, a PHP extension. So this makes it you're able to rewrite functions, to replace functions, um, built-in functions of the PHP of the of PHP. So, for example, you can replace uh, the function which opens a socket. So if you replace the function which opens a socket and redirect the connection of the bot to your local IRC server, it makes you able to communicate with the bot. So the bot connects to your local IRC server. You say to the, local, to the bot, hey, you're connected. Then the bot says, hey, I want to join this channel with this password. And this is my nick. And this is my username. And sometimes they even send you the server password. So you get all the information about the botnet. This is important for the third step later. So again, HP feed integration. So the data we collected from the honeypot get sent via HP, HP feeds to our sandbox. And the analysis report from the sandbox, again, gets sent over HP feeds to our monitoring tool. We provide a virtual file, virtual file system. So if the attacker wants to, um, if the malicious code wants to drop a file, this is also possible. If the, if the malicious code wants to read something from the file system, we provide him all kinds of information. And there's a small web interface to upload stuff. So the botnet spy. Again, it's a small IRC client, um, can be easily extended to other protocols. It's again fully automated. So we have HP feed integrations. We get a report from the sandbox and the botnet spy automatically starts to monitor the botnet if we are not already doing it. So if we get a new PHP bot in our sandbox, the botnet monitoring tool will start to monitor the botnet and collect all information from the botnet, which means messages issued by the botnet commander. So you get all the information like what is the DDoS target, how do they infect other systems, what kind of vulnerability are they using, where do they host the files they're using their attacks their, their, for the remote file inclusion, for example. So Jeff, is he here? Okay, I'll try. Okay, thanks. So again, it's 100% pure, pure Python, easy to extend, easy to use. So that's a full chain. We have this, the honeypot, sandbox, and bot and monitoring, and it's all automated. You can test, lean back, watch, and the data collected can be easily analyzed later on. So I didn't mention client-side honeypots and uh, virtual machine sandbox. So for client-side honeypot, uh, part we have the um, tool which Angel will present later, and for machine, virtual machine sandbox we have Cuckoo Works from Claudio. Okay, let's put on the gray hat. So, if you want to play with the botnet, you could try to brute force the botnet password. So. In order to connect, uh, to control the botnet, the botnet header has, has to send a password to the bot to authenticate himself so he can control the bot. And most of the time, the password is in plain text in the, in the bot itself. So either you open the bot, read the, get the, the password, and start using it, or you just get all the strings from the bot, try to brute force, this, brute force the password, because the bot is already connected to your local server, so that you can use your local server to put forth the password. You can easily automate the evaluation of the botnet. So if it's a big botnet, if the botnet is doing a lot of DDoS, it's probably an evil botnet. And you can overtake the botnet using the password you just brute forced. Possibly. So if you have control over botnet, you can also relocate the botnet Relocate to your own IRC server to take it away from the from the adversary. Um, you get intelligence about the botnet. So sometimes it's not possible to get the IP addresses of the bots in a botnet, but if it's on your own IRC server, you can get the IP addresses and you can chat on the botnet. Okay, that's my talk. We have again honeypot 
sandbox IRC monitoring. Easily connected, you can just run it. It's all open source and feel free to use it, feel free to extend it. Thank you very much.